Welcome, I would like to welcome you to the Trumpet TV and Radio Network. I'm delighted uh, to introduce to you one of the things that's, um, that's very dear to my heart and this is the passion and this is the desire, this is the cry out of my heart that I desire to see in this time in the history, not only of the United States, but in our world today. You know, if I, before I even go any further, I'd like to take you back to my journey as um, a young man. I grew up, I grew up um, back in the days in, you know, uh, the country. You know, the days were bad, they were evil because it was wars, it was people running, it was shooting and bombings that took place. Um, I'm age five and seven and um, my dad and, you know, uh, and mom are running from one place to another because, you know, things were chaotic, we are, we are very, um, you know, chaotic. And, you know, it left almost 800,000 people dead. So when we talk about crisis and talk about things breaking up in a nation, just like what we see over here, maybe it hasn't come to that extent of seeing more lives dead and everything like that. I've been through it. I, I'm never going to say anything, you know, th whether I'm preaching, sharing the Word of God in conferences, leaders and everywhere, where I don't share something out of experience. The gospel that changes people is a gospel that comes out of the life you've lived. You know, I think Paul becomes very effective. Apostle Paul becomes very effective because he, he had an experience with Jesus. And um, when he ha after that experience with Jesus, it was so radical for him. It was so personal for him that he could not stand anywhere and, and say something just out of anything. I mean, he, he actually takes his experience and education and everything he had never ever known or studied, you know, as a Pharisee. Um, as a scholar, he put it aside that he didn't have only the persuasion of men. He had the, the demonstration of the power of God because what Christ had done in, you know, in his life was so radical enough that it was even greater than the education he ever received. And yet it made him so effective to take the gospel all over the world. That's what is very central to what I'm about to say. And therefore, during the wars in our country, our country was so broken up. The structures were so broken up. The moral compass of the country was so broken up. We didn't have where to run. We, we know, and um, but but yet I like to really position this by saying that by the grace of God, as I speak this, so many, you know, some of my mentors, uh, people that I've grew, I grew up under, you know, they are watching this. They can be a witness because I grew up under them, and they too were going through. Pretty much what I would call a little bit of persecution, but everything, you know, it was happening all over the country. Having, the ch having church in Uganda was not favorable at that time. There were no church plants. Actually, I've already said that when you had a church of five people, you had a very nice business card and telling everybody you're good. I remember my dad and Robert Kayanja, you know, Bishop Robert Kayanja, what a great man of God, you know, and so many others, you know. Because uh, I was the one that I went to most of these places and they had like 20, 10 people and everything and doing lunch hour meetings and all that. You know, the gospel had not yet hit. You know, there was a movement underground, but it was not to the freedoms that we see or we see today, you know. And, but because of war, because of turmoil, nations cannot be built. Nations don't become great when there's instability. Even the gospel cannot be, you know, propagated when there's instability. So that was my country. And that was a place that I was born into. Uh, to, to tell you that we had hope then, you know, would be an understatement. We, I didn't know that we, we would have um, any kind of hope. But guess what? God has already given us a word. When we go back to the word of God, there is words, there, there's a word that, of hope in there that tells us what he's already spoken. The messengers of God that have come in and, and given us a hope that he, you know, when we see nations break down, the fabric of nations break down, the chaos and everything, it's not, be, the, it's not the absence of God. It's actually an opportunity for us to cry out to him 
And when we do cry out to Him, guess what happens? We, we, we invite in a new presence because it drives us to a place of, it drives us to a place of desperation, you know, a place of, of, of emptiness where, where we have no other option but to cry out to God. And that's what we did. And as I take that, and, and one day that happened, I can attribute this, you know, is when a man, a man of God called T. L. Osborne came. T. L. Osborne came to Uganda and he spoke great words over our nation. He, he decreed over Uganda there would not be any bloodshed. When he comes back, when I come back, he said there will not be any bloodshed in this country because he smelt it, he felt it in the spirit. Our country was, had a stench of blood in it. You know, there was a stench of death. There was a stench of cru cruelty, you know, and yet he decreed and he said there would be free. Most people in America here don't even know who this guy is, but that guy, you know, actually did more great mighty things in different parts of the world in his crusades going to nations and speaking hope and bringing the good news of jesus and my dad and pastor bishop robert kayanja i mean of course what else and, and even other pastors in the city we are very instrumental in having this man in and he was an american pastor he was an american white pastor who came to a broken nation and decreed that Uganda would be set free and, and would be decreed. And guess what? The, his words, right now he's in heaven. His words came to pass because today, today's Uganda is not the past Uganda that was going through wars and everything like that. We've come a long ways. Today there's almost 80% a Christian nation that was a nation that was meant to be, uh, it was meant to be a, a Muslim country. It was, it was supposed to be. That, that was actually already signed into decree we were going to be an Islamic state and God reversed all of that for his wish for that the purpose of God be, be for Uganda be a nation of, of evangelism a nation of men of God who do ministry all over the world Uganda Ugandan preachers have traveled to the ends of the earth and God has used them you know greatly I can name names you know uh, I can list the names of great men of God in that country but the reason why I went over there, I wanted to bring you to what we call the Trumpet Network. As I've been watching Christian television, we've never had, we've had good church, you know, television. We've had mega church television. We've had everything, we've, you know. And yet, the most crucial part, I believe, in our time today, in the end times, especially when, you know, especially when the hearts of men, the hearts of people are so cold, the hearts of this generation is so is so lowless it's re, it's engaged in abomination and iniquity this generation is so rebellious and yet christ has planted his church that he said the guests of hell will not prevail in this time and so we believe that in this time the voice of evangelism has to awaken you know the voice of evangelism, this chaos we see on our cities and our, in our streets, that lawlessness, that's, that's because people have nowhere to run. They are not seeing the church as that's open to them or bringing hope. Where is the voice of evangelism? We, you know, over the last 19th century, 20th century, we've had great men of God that have been all about evangelism. Reinhard Bonnke has been, you know, Billy Graham and all those great men of God, I can name names, Robert Kayanja, you know, uh, Benny Hinn and all of them have been all over the world. I can name the list of every evangelist. I'm not talking about church preachers, I'm talking about evangelists. And they went out to go bring souls. Evangelists are soul winners. And that's what our network is about. Our network is going to be about evangelism. It's going to be a network where and, and missions, we, we, we are twofold. It's gonna be missions. People who are taking care of others, like Mother Teresa, you know. Uh, the evangelist of today has to awaken because we are living in a rebellious generation that needs to hear the gospel. We're living in a generation that's gonna invite the return of Jesus. But how many people are sounding the trumpet? How many people are sounding the trumpet? I believe that when this is the time for us to sound the trumpet. This is the time for us to go back. Yes, the streets are chaotic. But this moment of fear, for us to be fearful and fold our hands and go back in our houses and, and not say and not tell the people that Jesus Christ died for them. 
that John 3.16 didn't happen in vain. That the, the death and the resurrection of Jesus didn't happen in vain. It is a reason why you and I are born again. And this is an appeal to every, every evangelist that knows that's not only seeking to have a pulpit on the inside, but is willing to say, you know what, I'm going to go back out and bring and decree the message of the good news to the lost. The hurting, the world is suffering because we do not have the evangelist at the height of the place where God wants him to be. That's, the world is suffering. The world is going through chaos because the watchmen are not on their walls. What can we do? What can we do in this hour? What can we do? We just lost, you know, uh, Billy Graham left, Reinhard Bonnke left, all these great men of God that has been, have been winning souls. I'm not saying that there's not more any evangelists, but the spirit, the, the gifting of, 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 of the evangelist has, is not, even in the local church, it's not the one that's on, the, in America, the evangelist is not the one that's powerful. We don't have giftings in the area of, of the evangelist. He's nowhere to be found. Everybody goes to school for, to be a pastor. You know, but we don't have the evangelist. And yet the evangelist is a gatherer. He's the one that goes out to the street, the streets, you know, and bring many to the kingdom of God. I know we have all these technologies. We have Google, we have social media and everything like that that we're using as tools of modern day evangelists. Evangelist. But we have not empowered our people to have a soul winning anointing, a soul winning grace of God. We've got to do that. And this network is going to be able to awaken and bring many to the kingdom of God. It's taken a long time. We've gone through tremendous time of attacks and everything like that. But we believe this is a time step by step. And those of you who feel that want to be part of this and you know men of God, if you know a man of God that's got a heart for souls. I'm talking about souls. I'm not talking about a guy, you know, yes, I loved the teaching ministry. I like the pastor. I'm a pastor too. You know, our church, Glory International Church, right in the city, we planted it. You know, we love it. We bless God for it. But my heart right now, because of the urgency of what's going on, because of the crisis, because of the lawlessness, because of the souls being lost, the blindness, you know, we need to bring, to awaken the gifting of the evangelist. And right here, you know, we will be. This is going to be the cause for the awakening. The awakening of the evangelists. The awakening of the church. Pastors, awaken everybody that you know has got a heart for evangelism. And they don't let them sit down because we are losing. Let me tell you this. This is taught us that last year alone, there's one million people that walked away from the church. They never joined anywhere. And we don't like those kind of statistics. You know, the year before, there was another 800 million. 800,000 people that walked away from the church. Why at the most crucial time are we not having the opportunity to see more people excited about the church, excited about winning souls for the, you know, winning souls for the kingdom of God. It's urgent. It is very urgent. We just don't want to have another network that competes with others because yes, we have TBN, we have Dexter, we have, you know, we have all of them, so many of them. But if we only are reaching people that are already reached, if we, let me say this again, I know it's not going to sound very well to some of our, you know, some of our people. If we're only reaching, if our television, Christian television is only reaching those who are already reached, maybe God's awakening us with everything going on for us to go back and love them. I, what I don't like is this, is for us to see chaos on our streets and the church has been sidelined and we don't hear the voice of the church we don't hear the voice of men of god you know we don't hear it we've left we've let you know we've let everybody else have a, a say on national television about what about the crisis and not the church and yet the god god sent jesus to die for us so that his church can be the light of the world we can be the light of the world because the church is we the people that 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 we can be the voice we can be the center where people are running to in this crisis we can be the center for reconciliation the place for unity a place for revival a place for healing a place for that we can be that and when we become that guess what we will transform our cities we will transform our nation we will transform people's lives 
they are hurting and we are judging them we are walking away from them we are calling them names and yet we are not taking the gospel to them I am passionate about this and I'm calling for men and women of God who want to be part of this who want to stand with me for us to have a network for evangelists I know we have a team that's helping us put this together but I'm asking men of God will say you know what even if we have to bring back Billy Graham Bill Graham is classics and put them back on or we have to bring back Run Hat Bonky and, and all of these guys who have done crusades we're going to get all of that footage and put it on one network and remind the body of Christ if we have to do a conference of only evangelists in this city we're going to do it because it's time for us not to hide our heads it's time for us to sound the trumpet and the trumpet network and radio will be a voice of evangelism it'll be a voice for the awakening it'll be a voice that god is called to set a standard and awaken don't let your gifting of evangelism go into apathy and lukewarm awaken i know that in most of us church settings the evangelist doesn't have a front place the evangelist doesn't have a time to preach the evangelist is supposed to be out but he's supposed to be prepared because of our church leadership or structures i was born in a church Miracle Center Church, I'm going to say it here. Miracle Center Church was a church of evangelists. And these evangelists have gone all over the world. I, I thank God for Robert Kayanja. I thank God for that man of God. I thank God for uh, Bishop Charles and Subaga. I thank God for every evangelist. You know, all the men of God that started that church. I thank God for every evangelist in Uganda. I thank God for Bishop Musisi. Because I was raised at a place that cared. You know, we had a big church. But these men still went out to preach the gospel. You cannot have a mega church and you don't go out to preach the gospel to the lost. You cannot have a mega church and you don't reach your city. And you don't reach and crime rate doesn't go down and, and you don't go out. We cannot do that anymore. That's been the old system. You can hear passion and say, no. Yeah, we, the church back where I was born started with seven people and grew to 10,000 to 15,000. It was a mega church, but this church up until today, you know, has done many crusades. You know, and all the men of God that I've worked under, whether it's Joseph or all, whether, whether, whether it's Bishop of C.C. or and all the apostles in the country, they're still preaching the gospel to the lost. And if it were not for the pandemic, the crusades have been going everywhere. Thousands upon thousands of people have been coming. And so we're not trying to get another network to compete with anybody. We are trying to call men and women of God. Where that's going to be in Africa. We need evangelist content from there. We need uh, content from the United States. We are going to blanket this, the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ in this hour. And this is my call. And this is my cry. Those of you who want to join, you're going to be able to be able to, to inbox us. You're going to be able to reach us. I'm going to give you an easy place where you can reach us Mike Kingsley 2019 at gmail.com that's the first one because we're setting up all this you know you can reach there and send me information of how we can build the trumpet network the awakening network how we can reach God's people and the radio please pray for me because it's not easy to set up this financially in every area but we're gonna do it in the name of Jesus because this is the hour this is the time may God bless you I trust that God is calling us for something because we cannot sit back while the cities are under an uh, inflamed riots are taking place because people have no the gospel has not reached to them somebody else is preaching to them the secular world is preaching to them socialism is preaching to them all of these politics is preaching to them what about the church where is the church where is the body of Christ may God bless you it's time for us to awaken it's time for us to rise up. May God bless you. I look forward to seeing you. And many more programs are coming like this. God bless you. Bye-bye.